Observe the common tennis player at the proving ground. Today these young males play for more than just honor. Today they play for exercise. Within the proving ground, all tennis players are equally recognized by their matted wet fur and mating squawks. Uh. But outside the proving ground, they are masters of camouflage. For your safety and the safety of others, here are six ways to spot a tennis player in the wild. Number one, tan lines. The feet of the common tennis player are remarkably more pale than the rest of their body. Almost blinding, in fact. Note the distasteful wrinkles and sock lines. But perhaps their most objectionable feature is how they are absolutely cool with flaunting them in a pair of sandals. But it's not just the feet, for these tan lines occur on other areas. Should you get close enough, you may spot the pale under the neck the upper arms, the upper thighs, and for the most edgy of tennis player, the forehead. Number two, calluses. Built up through years of sparring at the proving ground, calluses are a natural protective layer for their hands. Shaking hands with a tennis player may lead you to wonder if theirs were the roughest hands you've ever felt. That's rough, buddy. The rougher the calluses, the more intense the player. Either that, or they spend too much time masturbating. Number three, one arm bigger than the other. The natural dominance of one appendage over the other leads the tennis player to be remarkably, shall we say, lopsided. Encountering a player in the wild may reveal one forearm and or bicep in pristine physical form, while the other as underutilized and flimsy. Like the callus, the more intense the player, the more lopsided their body may be. Either that, or they spend too much time master- Number four, shadow swings with random things. It has long been observed that tennis players make imaginary swinging gestures in the air. At the proving ground, this is done with either the racket or the bare hand, but in the wild, you may spot a player performing shadow swings with a variety of items. A book, a violin, a spatula, why, I once observed a player practicing down the line backhands holding his baby. He did have terrific form, I must say. Whoa. A recent study published in Game Set Nature hypothesized that by mimicking the movements of a tennis swing, the brain creates neural pathways that allow the body to perform the movement more efficiently. But that study is a load of shite. Because no matter how perfect the player's shadow swing, their real swing is often sorely lacking. Number five, tennis shoes. Oh my God, shit. To most, the words tennis shoe is an all-encompassing term for a sneaker, but not to a tennis player. To them, the tennis shoe is a majestic item of footwear, flat-soled, lightweight, and precision engineer for three planes of movement, even though most players only seem to use one and a half. It has been observed that many players pledge their allegiance to one shoe brand for life, and they often give more thought to the look of their shoes than to the actual movement of them. Should you spot a player in the wild, you may observe a peculiar wear pattern on the sole. The most intensive players are able to achieve the long sought after medial arch scuff, while the majority of players only seem to be able to wear out the toe. The poor toe of a tennis shoe is often dragged more times than RuPaul. Can I get an A-man up in here? Number six, a t-shirt from that one time 13 years ago when their team went to sectionals. Many players push their tennis beyond the bounds of exercise and compete to prove that they are still mate-worthy. I've met someone else. Curiously though, the winner of these competitions does not receive a mate. Instead, they receive what can only be described as a tiny, shiny ball. Why these balls are so coveted remains a mystery. 
Perhaps the greatest mystery is why all the losers of the tiny ball competition receive the same ill-fitting, poorly designed a bloody masterpiece. tournament t-shirt. Should you see a player rocking a tennis ball graphic tournament tee, do not inquire about it. They will spend 15 minutes telling you about the cross-court dipping passing shot that the opposing team had the audacity to call out. We return now to the proving ground to once more observe the tennis player in its natural habitat. Sweating, gasping for breath, thirsty because it forgot its water bottle, and the watering hole three quarts away is just too far. Yet amidst the struggle for life and exercise, the common tennis player perseveres. 